Our customers have been begging us for an airplane that could go into the backcountry for years. Way before I was here, the folks at Vans were thinking about how and when might we do a high wing airplane. I think that the market has changed and the demand and the specific mission that this airplane fulfills has certainly grown quite a bit over the years. We're responding to the market and we don't want to respond with an airplane right away, but we want to respond with the right airplane. And so we've taken our time, observed the market, and tried to come up with the best solution. Since this was our first high wing design, it was really more of a challenge than I think most of us had anticipated going into it. One of the things that RVs are renowned for is the feel of the airplane. In an engineering perspective, that's control harmony, control forces, making sure that everything behaves the way that you want and a direct connection from the pilot to the airplane. Those things are really difficult to predict ahead of time. We do everything that we can to try and get that right in the initial design phase, but you can't know 100% until you've built and flown an airplane, whether or not you've really hit the mark on that. We chose to do a few different things because this is a test airplane for the purposes of learning, expecting that we're gonna change some things. The most noticeable is gonna be the fuel tank. Uh, there's a fuel tank in the passenger seating position instead of in the wings where it will eventually end up. We did that partly to save some time so that we could build and test on a schedule that allowed us to finish the airplane when we needed to. And partly because it gives us some flexibility in how we ballast the airplane to explore the CG envelope. I think what makes this airplane so special is that it really broadens the range of what Vance has to offer. The area of the wing is much bigger, the flaps are much bigger, so now we can operate out of some strips that perhaps in the previous times we weren't able to operate out of. Let's try tucking a, a fully dampened hydraulic and pneumatic landing gear suspension system into such a small package that the occupant doesn't even know it's there. From the outside, it just looks like a spring steel gear. We really wanted to maintain a flat, low profile floor with a damping system with as little drag impact as we could get. And I think we've hit the mark. The tail wheel of this airplane is also a oil dampened air shock. Uh, internal floating piston is the top technology in the suspension world. It has a four bar suspension linkage, a constant tailwheel caster angle, and what that's addressing is all the tailwheel shimmy problems that pick up with worn out springs or people changing their tire size, how the airplane's loaded. One thing that I think is really cool in this airplane that I'm really proud of are the doors, because they're all transparent, so you can look straight down at the ground, and that's obviously different from any other RV. I think the customers will especially like the amount of space that they have to pack, and the amount of payload that they'll have in the final product. We are trying to address the, you've made it to your location, what's next? From the beginning, this airplane, we decided had to fit a full-size adult bicycle. The moment we built the mock-up, bicycles were there, my bicycles were there. Over the last few years, the changes Vance has made have given us the ability to do some things differently with this airplane. We now have the ability to CNC machine to high precision pretty much anything that we can dream up. We built almost every single part of this airplane in-house. Every piece of metal that's on this airplane, we processed in-house ourselves. We have a hydro press that allows us to design, make a change, and have it pressed in the same day. A couple hours later, have it going on the airplane. That hydro press can press as many parts in a day as we used to press in a week. What really gets me going each day is coming to work and the people that are here that are making this thing happen. Everybody's had to step up. Everybody's, you know, gone above and beyond. Really, we're able to count on each other. The team that we have working on this airplane is the best that I have worked with in a number of different places in my career. Uh, what we've accomplished and the amount of time that we've accomplished, it's outstanding. Getting this airplane built and ready for Oshkosh is the most intense work I've done in my career. The team of people working equally hard, being part of that uh, experience is I have a hard time expressing how awesome that is. That's the dream. I can't come up with enough good things to say. I think the first time I saw the RV-15 fly, there was a, you know, an excitement for, hey, let's figure out what this thing can actually do. Returning for a first flight and seeing everybody just lined up outside of the hangar waiting for you. What happened? Tell me it was good. Tell me if it was really bad, you know, and just how everybody was anxious to, to hear the feedback. on building the aircraft to the company, Super great experience uh, just to see folks smile and cheer and just so happy at something that they've been contributing to but they didn't really know what they were contributing to and seeing their reaction was really cool.
formation in the RBAs was a pretty cool experience for me personally because it was the first time that I got to experience the airplane as an airplane connected to my wingmen, uh, which are good buddies of mine that I've flown with a lot. So it was a humbling experience in the fact that I was flying an aircraft that's never been flying before, one of a kind, with my buddies on my wing, over the sunset, grass strip. It was a pretty cool experience. That's pretty awesome.